What is going on, everybody? James Hancock here. I'm back to offer my 100% spoiler-free review for Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves, which is coming out on March 31st. And if you are a player from any era, from the 70s up until the present day, there's a lot to be spoiled. There are a lot of little Easter eggs or nuggets tucked away in there in terms of spells or creatures or locations or lore. So if you want to go in totally spoiler-free, then avoid the internet until you see the flick. But I'm going to review this movie three different ways. The first, just as a lighthearted comedic adventure that anybody of any age can go see. I think that's where the movie is the most successful. The second way is as a D&D &D movie, and anybody who's played the game or likes the game is going to have very specific ideas about what they want to see in a D&D &D movie, and I feel like the movie thrives with a, with a, with a very specific flavor of D&D, &D, in particular 5th edition Forgotten Realms, where laughs are more important than bloodshed. And the third way I'll review the movie, and I think this is where it's at its weakest, is just as a fantasy movie, in particular for people who like to read fantasy books, watch dark adult fantasy movies, etc. and so forth. But I feel like as a lifelong movie fan and as a lifelong D&D player and as a lifelong fantasy reader and consumer, I am more than qualified to judge the film in all three ways. But let me start with a brief message to some of my friends that I've played the game with. I have to take back about 60 to 70% of all the shit that I was talking about this movie in advance. There was something about the trailers that really rubbed me the wrong way. And there was something about the overhyping of the film by the people who saw it at South by Southwest that I felt like people were just shoving this movie down my throat, almost as if I were not allowed to form my own opinion about this movie. And I'm sorry, I've been watching movies my whole life. I've been playing D&D my whole life. I am more than capable of deciding for myself if I like Dungeons & Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, especially when people who don't play the game are telling me how I'm supposed to feel about it. So for all the people out there who are completely, totally guilty of overhyping the movie, you are not doing the movie any favors. I feel like this movie is a genuine crowd pleaser and I think it should be very successful, but not every D&D player or fantasy freak is going to necessarily like it and they are totally entitled to a few justifiable criticisms. But here are the basics ripped right from Wikipedia. Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves is a 2023 American fantasy heist action comedy film directed by Jonathan Goldstein and John Francis Daly, who co-wrote the screenplay with Michael Giglio from a story by Chris McKay and Giglio. Based on the tabletop RPG Dungeons & Dragons, it is set in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting and has no connections to the film trilogy released between 2000 and 2012. The film stars Chris Pine, Michelle Rodriguez, Reggae John Page, Sophia Lillis, and Hugh Grant. And before I go any further, let me just add that director John Francis Daly unfortunately shot both himself and this movie in the foot with his unfortunate word choice in an interview with Variety ahead of this film's release where he said, We also love emasculating leading men. And that line, taken out of context, is the exact kind of line that's going to alienate, I don't know what percentage of the potential audience, but a giant chunk. And I totally get it. There are a lot of people out there who were gun shy and or just outright angry at watching some of their favorite characters getting emasculated in their own franchises over the last couple of years. And so if they see a line like that out of context, immediately it puts them in a defensive position where they're going to be pissed and they're just going to assume the worst about this movie. A movie that would be more than capable of converting people over to its side if people were to give it a chance because the movie is humorous and it is fun and it is fast paced. But to anybody out there who read that interview with John Francis Daly and decided to hell with you and your movie, I get it. I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. My advice to actors and directors when talking to the media would just be do no harm. Keep your foot out of your mouth. And when you're talking about a movie called Dungeons and Dragons, just say Conan is your fucking hero and you're good and get out of the movie's way. But I guess that would be a total lie because this movie has absolutely nothing in common with the style and tone and approach of Conan the Barbarian. But let me just start with review number one. Is this movie a good, fun, lighthearted, comedic adventure that you can basically take a row of 30 children to see and not worry about any of them having nightmares or storming out crying? And yes, it is. The movie starts off a little bit on shaky footing, but then it really finds its footing with the arrival of the paladin played by Reggae Jean Page because he is easily the best part of this movie. And for anybody who's ever played D&D &D and played in a group where you've got a group of rogues or thieves or you know just murderous sociopaths or whatever but there's always that one person who wants to be a paladin and doesn't necessarily know how to play the paladin with nuance where they're just so pure and so good and so noble that it can be a little bit like bringing a preacher to an orgy it just doesn't quite work which is kind of where we find ourselves in this movie where you have a bunch of characters with a lot of uh, moral shortcomings who suddenly team up with this guy who is hell on wheels in combat and a total badass however 
He's very literal. He doesn't like irony. He doesn't like jokes. He doesn't like sarcasm. But as portrayed by Rega Jean Page, he is just absolutely delightful. And my theater was howling with pretty much every single line that he spoke. And even though he's not in the entire movie, from the point he arrives onward, the movie is more or less racing headlong towards its conclusion in a very satisfying fashion because the final third of the movie is this giant heist sequence. And I feel like that's where the movie is really at its best. It just keeps getting better and better as it goes. And they're basically using the Guardians of the Galaxy playbook where the character played by Chris Pine is very similar to the character played by Chris Pratt in Guardians. And he assembles a bunch of ne'er-do-wells and misfits and bumblers and adventurers, etc. And then eventually they're going to have to rise to the challenge and do the right thing and save the day. And if people want to call it generic D&D or generic fantasy, they're not wrong, but it is a very enjoyable movie. And if I were 12 seeing this for the first time, when I was first really getting into d and I probably would have shit my pants. And I think it's going to convert some of the unconverted into trying the game for the first time. And speaking of the game, I've got some of my old dice from back in the day all right here. This will be a, uh, a key part of everybody's journey into becoming a D&D player. But obviously you can play it on um, Roll20 as well, where you roll digital dice, but you're still rolling the dice all the same. But long story short, I think the movie more than is successful at what it what it tried to do. And I feel like you should always judge a movie based on what it's trying to do as opposed to what you expected to do or wanted to do. If they were taking like requests, like a DJ, I would have requested a very different movie, but I had fun and I'll gladly go back for a sequel. So let's move on to review number two, reviewing it as a D&D adaptation. And I feel like if you're a fan of fifth edition D&D and you enjoy more laughter than bloodshed, then this movie is going to be right up your alley. And if you love the Forgotten Realms, it'll do in terms of the names of the cities, the places, the spells, some of the characters. But it doesn't necessarily capture the tone of some different eras of Forgotten Realms. Like in the late 80s and early 90s, I read a couple of novels like the Avatar trilogy. I read a lot of Forgotten Realms comics. I played a lot of the computer games like Baldur's Gate, which is set on the Sword Coast. Over the decades, there's been a hell of a lot of material written about the Forgotten Realms, a lot of modules set in the Forgotten Realms. And I've never run a strict Forgotten Realms campaign. However, I did run the module Dead and Thay from uh, Tales from the Yawning Portal. And that actually gave me the, the appropriate context for a lot of the villains in this flick. But the reality about D&D is that no two tables are alike. Every single table, every single group of friends runs their table very differently in terms of tone and how they tackle the material and what kind of what kind of overall flavor they want. For example, right now I'm running a second edition Dark Sun campaign. And actually the first module that we ran, Freedom, has quite a lot of overlap with the, uh, the main plot of the main villain in this movie. I won't go into any more details, but if you like that module Freedom, you will respond to at least part of the story of this movie. But Dark Sun has absolutely nothing in common with the flavor of this, of this movie. Or if you love Dragonlance, Dragonlance is much more of like a high fantasy story with really high dramatic stakes and a, and a feeling of epic adventure. That's got a di very different flavor. And obviously Ravenloft, which is much more about horror and, and gothic romance, that's got a completely different flavor from the flavor of this movie. But as you watch this movie, you can easily get an idea of what a night of gaming would be like with the writers and directors of this movie and it would be a fun evening of rolling dice and having a few laughs with your friends but I'm not going to claim that this style of D&D is going to be for every D&D fan out there because there are an infinite number of ways to approach the game which is why it's lasted 50 years and is more popular than ever. But the real dagger in the heart of this movie as a D&D adaptation is that The Legend of Vox Machina already beat them to the punch. The Legend of Vox Machina is lighthearted, but it's also got adult humor and it's got much more adult scenarios and it's fucking great. I feel like Matt Mercer and all of his collaborators over two seasons have given us what is probably the best adaptation of D&D that we will ever see. And the second season came out fairly recently. So for anybody where the second season of Vox Machina is fresh on their minds, well, Honor Among Thieves, it's going to feel a little weak by comparison. And now let's get to my third review, reviewing it as a fantasy film or the kind of fantasy film that I want to see. And this is where I feel like the movie's at its weakest. The fantasy feels paper thin. It's not immersive at all. It feels very meta. It almost feels like at any second the actors could start talking about their character classes and like what their ability scores are, as opposed to being a story where you kind of give yourself over to the experience and have that suspension of disbelief. And it does feel like the Cliff's Notes for Forgotten Realms, where they're just trying to get through as many bullet points as humanly possible, which for me is not the kind of fantasy experience that I want. Like The kind of ex fantasy experience that I want is something like you would see on House of the Dragon, where it's 
dark and it's got gravitas and it's got scope and it's got depth and it's got really refined, nuanced characters. Like that is my idea of dark adult fantasy or the books by R. Scott Backer or the books by George R. R. Martin or the books by Joe Abercrombie. There are a lot of great fantasy authors out there or even one of the old school guys like Robert E. Howard. If your idea of fantasy is like a Frank Frazetta painting with like heavy metal music in the background, well then Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves is not going to scratch your itch. And another great example of dark adult fantasy within the D&D brand is the upcoming computer game Baldur's Gate 3. I already played the early access version. It's absolutely incredible. And the cinematics are totally first rate. Give me a movie in the style of Baldur's Gate 3, please. I will see it 150 times. Because I think the most valid criticism of this movie is that when it comes to fantasy, this is as generic as it gets. However, it could end up being a good gateway drug. Like if you are a 40-year-old father and you want to get your kids kids into D&D and they're somewhere between age 5 and 10, well, I feel like this would be a great way to kind of get their toes wet without completely traumatizing them. However, going back to Conan, I did see Conan the Barbarian in the theater at age 5 and I fucking loved it. So to each their own when it comes to gateway drugs. But I can't wrap up this video without discussing the cast because no matter what lens you're looking at this movie through, whether as a kind of comedic adventure movie or a D&D movie or a fantasy movie, the cast is really good no matter what. Chris Pine, in a lot of ways, it feels like this is the performance that Chris Pine has been building up to or leading to as a leading man. And he's probably better as a bard who's not so great in combat than he is as Captain Kirk. And I felt like he was more than up to the challenge of being somebody who's the brains of the outfit, the strategist, but not necessarily best in combat. Michelle Rodriguez, she plays a damn good barbarian. And she has a small problem early on in the movie where every single line reading is identical. Like no matter what she says, it's kind of the exact same tone and of course she's playing a very simple and straightforward barbarian so I get it but if you were to ask which cast member gives the weakest performance of the central characters I might say Michelle Rodriguez I already mentioned how reggae Jean Page absolutely stole the show and I'll just say it again he was fucking fantastic the whole movie is worth seeing just to see him in action and no matter what he does next as an actor I will watch it with anticipation because I think he's got serious chops and serious talent and so yeah Bravo to Reggae Jean. Uh, Justice Smith, he was also really fucking good as the bumbling wizard in this. And there's nothing better than watching a bumbling wizard who slowly but surely starts to get a little better. Whether you're talking about a movie like Dragon Slayer or uh, The Last Unicorn or whatever the case might be. But the bumbling wizard is a great fantasy trope. And Justice Smith, he seemed to really get it. And there's some really good scenes where both Justice Smith as well as Chris Pine's characters aren't necessarily making a lot of contributions on the, the combat front. And they're kind of bonding in that respect. And at any rate, I thought their chemistry was really strong. Uh, Sophia Lillis. People obviously love and adore her from the It movies, and she's really good in this. I think people are going to look at the Druid class in a completely different light moving forward because it just shows how, played in a particular way, Druids can be stealthy, they can be tanks, they can be they can perform a variety of roles in an overall group. And um, yeah, I thought she was very solid. I mean, she's not going to be anybody's favorite character, but I thought she was really good in it. Hugh Grant was fucking incredible. No D&D &D group is complete unless you have a character in there, whether you're talking about assassins or rogues or whatever, where they are more than happy to watch the whole world burn if it means a few more gold pieces in their pocket. So bravo to the movie to, for giving us a neutral evil character who is looking after his own interests. Uh, Daisy Head plays a really good villain. I don't want to go too deep into who she is or what she does because I feel like I might venture into spoiler territory, but as like one of the main adversaries in the film, she does a damn good job. One of the weakest aspects of the movie, sadly, is the character of Kira, played by Chloe Coleman. And I don't think it's Chloe Coleman's fault, but there's a weird trend going on in Hollywood right now where screenwriters not only don't know how to write in the voice of a teenage character, but instead to choose to write them as the most unlikable person in the entire movie. This was a problem in Ant-Man Ant and the Wasp, Quantumania. It's not as glaring here, but it's still a problem where early on in the movie, you're like, who cares about this girl? We hate this girl. Feed her to a beholder and let's just move on with our lives. And over the course of the film, we're forced to kind of get emotionally invested in the relationship between Chris Pine and Chloe Coleman. And I just feel like the screenwriters really let her down by making her the least interesting and the least likable character in the entire movie. And I'm sure in real life, Chloe Coleman is a lovely, remarkable, very special young performer. But suffice to say, the writers just dropped the ball on that front. And as far as the rest of the movie goes, in terms of just like the look, the tone, the style, as I mentioned before, 
it moves. I mean, it's one of the fastest screenplays that I can remember over the last like three to five years. Or maybe that's just in the editing where they were cutting out a lot of the, like just kind of trimming a lot of fat from the bone. But holy cow, this is a two hour and 15 minute movie and it moves and it's like, all right, we need this information, so we gotta go here and get it. Now we need this item in order to open that door, so let's go there and get that. But it's a lot of fetching grab, it's a lot of we need this information. We need this to go to here to get to the next part of the story before we can finally have this big giant heist. And as I mentioned before, the movie just gets steadily better and better as it goes. The middle section with the Paladin, first rate, and the end with the heist is just an absolute blast. So. If my criticisms of the movie bothered you, fair play, like to each their own. If you love the movie, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. And if you hated the movie, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. Everybody's free to decide for themselves whether or not this is the D&D movie for them. But I think this movie is further evidence that Paramount is on a major hot streak right now. And I feel like they've been kind of like the sleeping giant for many years. But now between movies like Top Gun Maverick and this, they're slowly but surely coming back to life and as somebody who's a fan of Paramount's movies from the early 30s as well as the late 60s early 70s I wish them all the luck in the world but before I wrap up this video I do need to bring you a public service announcement because Manscaped now has beard products and now a brand new nose and ear hair trimmer if you haven't already heard the leaders in below the waist grooming are traveling north of your south pole with a revolutionary beard hedger pro kit plus they've now launched the brand new weed whacker 2.0 which confirms they have all the best tools for your hygiene toolbox time for you to upgrade your toolbox by going to manscaped.com and using our discount code WRONGREAL in all caps for 20% off plus free shipping. The Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the ultimate package that makes it easier than ever to craft your signature look. This thing is an elite beard trimmer. The Beard Hedger is tough on hair but smooth on your face, leading to single stroke efficiency that brings satisfaction one stroke at a time. And with a nice beard, your face is perfectly groomed, right? Wrong. You need to keep an eye out for those tough to trim ear and nose hairs. The brand new Weed Whacker 2.0 offers improved blades and skin safe technology with a no tugging guarantee. It's never been so painless to mind your manholes. Your significant other will be delighted to see you covering all bases, if you know what I mean. So thanks so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Please consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification bell. And if I irritated you or annoyed you with some of my stronger opinions, it's only because I've been invested in the fantasy genre for a very, very long time. And so anybody who's been playing D&D for a long time or reading fantasy books for a long time, they're all going to have strong opinions that are well earned, but I do think the film will be successful. I do think it's going to bring in a whole new generation of fans to the D&D &D brand, and I hope they make a sequel in the very near future, and I will watch it. So with all that out of the way, hope everyone has a great week, but more importantly, as always, onwards and upwards.